Hey, I'm Manu Chihuahua. I am a satirist, six-time holder of Britain's bushiest eyebrows, and this is my life-changing interview for the Sunday Times style. Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook have been down for hours, and I've been lying here, motionless, like a sloth or a climate protester. I've got to keep moving, otherwise I could die. People always ask me, you know, oh, what comedians did you watch growing up? Like, what, what sketch shows were you watching? The honest truth is, I was a wrestling addict. The Rock, Stone Cold, Triple H. And these guys were showmen. Stone Cold used to go, and that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Young me was sitting there, you know, watching the pecs jiggle and these sort of this trash talking and thinking, you know what? I want to do that. Obviously, because I'm five foot seven, a wrestling career was never gonna work out, but I definitely took that charisma and channeled it into my sketches. One of the reasons I had such an active imagination and was so expressive, also probably a reason I remained single for so much of my life is I was addicted to SpongeBob. The episode was so unpredictable and the characters were so manic and I, it used to feel like an accurate depiction of what was inside my imagination. SpongeBob was the perfect encapsulation of the inside of my brain. There's an episode of SpongeBob where there's only one bus and it only comes when he's not looking and he spends a whole episode trying to get on this bus and he never catches it. And to be honest with you, I think that episode was made with the exact Norfolk village I lived in in mind because if you miss that bus, you were not traveling anywhere for a year. I'm Terry Bullweather, and right now the temperature in the UK is one degree warmer than it usually is, which means one thing, heat wave. People are probably watching this looking at me thinking, wow, this guy is a cold-blooded gangster. You know, he probably grew up with a pistol strapped to each wrist. Actually, no. I grew up in Framingham Piggott, which literally sounds like one of the Queen's second cousins, where the biggest threat to human life was accidentally standing on a badger. So having to process that as someone who just moved from Zimbabwe, it was like, do you know what? I think I probably would have rather grown up in the hood. I used to work in this super posh restaurant. It was like a catering service. You know, when the Queen came to Norfolk, they were the ones who served her. I didn't get asked to work that day, don't know why, but we would be serving people and you'd have to like tweeze potatoes with like a silver knife and fork and stuff. That's when I first began to, I grew up aware of the concept of class, like what does it mean to be in a different class? You know, how, what are their different world views and stuff? And so that obviously got the wheels turning. You know, I remember um, this one day working and uh, I was holding a hot tray of potatoes, you know, I, the image we're getting here is I was the designated potato guy. I was in this massive marquee in the middle of summer. This guy turned around and looked at me and he went, oh, I bet you're used to this heat, aren't you? And I, I was thinking to myself, you know, what does that mean? Obviously now I understand what he meant. <laughs> that taught me lots of things, class, race, um, you know, lots of the things that come through in my sketches today. Yeah, no, I'm done, thanks. I mean, the charcoal in my bagel wasn't even activated. Like, I thought these guys were known for chefing. I remember going on Twitter and seeing that Jamie Oliver was trending because he'd released this jerk rice. Now, I was actually a victim of this jerk rice because I took it to work one day in a rush, opened it up. Basically, it was rice, gravy and peas. I'm not even lying, okay? I'm still scarred from that. And I just remember being like, cool, well, let me make a sketch about this. Like, like how will Jamie Oliver cook a Caribbean meal? And so I created Johnny Oliver, you know, Jamie's Caribbean cousin, because for obvious reasons, I don't look too alike to Jamie Oliver. Rushing around my kitchen, spraying chicken slices with anti-back, um, you know, punching rum to make rum punch. And I just thought, you know what, me and, the, me, and, me and the guys are gonna find this hilarious. It was on 30 views when I went to bed. And the next morning I woke up and I remember refreshing my Instagram and it went up by like 16, 60, 600, 6,000, and the rest is history. Onto the jerk chicken. Now to get it tender turtle base style, we're gonna give it a quick massage on the shiatsu machine. You've heard of vibes cartel, this is vibrating cartel. In Zimbabwe, we used to do a lot of school plays, but you know, as is always the way in Zimbabwe, teachers felt the need to remix them. So I remember being Jafar in the Aladdin school play, but being forced to fight Aladdin to the death via dance battle. I would be moonwalking and I'd be doing the worm. However, I didn't know how to do the worm correctly, so I'd always end up sort of bashing my groin. So I wasn't, I basically, I was never able to rehearse it. It would just have to be on the night, do the worm. It's gonna take it out of me, but it's gonna be worth it. So yeah, my earliest memory performing was basically uh, breakdancing against Aladdin. 
doing the worm and then wondering if I'd ever be able to have children. <laughs> yeah. Right, Dave, go! I'm Luca. I'm Tasha. My name's Andrew. Okay, sounding a bit white at the moment. David, can you put an accent on, please? My name is David. Lucho's a nice one, David. That's diversity TikTok. You know, I've started doing stand-up and, uh, you know, I've, I, it's been mentioned in conversation by, you know, the person helping me to do that, that, you know, in three years, if you work hard, if you really put your mind to it, you could sell out the O2 Arena for stand-up. So as soon as I heard that, I was like, all right, cool, game on. We're going to do it. So even if it's not three years, it could be 13 years, that's now one of the things I want to do. I want to sell out the O2 Arena and have everyone in there having the time of their lives. Hey, thanks for watching my life-changing interview. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video because for every subscription, one of my eyebrows will be tweezed and I got a lot to get rid of. Thank you.